please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. The Matrix Reloaded Movie Thoughts In Matrix 1, once we learn what the Matrix is, our idea of how the good guys win doesn't really change. Just our, uh, our ideas of whether or not Neo is the one who will, you know, who will live, who won't, and such. And, you know, here we were hoping that the Oracle would clear things up, but we leave more confused and it's, it, you know, the, the critics point out that she used to talk. She, she, in one, she's one of the only characters who talks like a person, but now she seems to have morphed into Morpheus. And, you know, by the end of the film, even before the information overload of the architect, we have no clue how Neo is going to win or what it even means anymore. And if you have to have a character just straight up explain the concept, especially at the end of your movie, you've taken a wrong turn somewhere along the way. We didn't really want our minds blown again. We wanted to see the good guys win. Again, once in one, once we know what the Matrix is, we're just given more, you know, more details about what the Matrix is. But, you know, we're, we're basically, we're told that the media-saturated modern world that we're frustrated with isn't the real one, so, and, and isn't right for us, so the action is going to put an end to this frustrating lifestyle. It's not, no longer merely really cool to look at, and yeah, here that is then changed, you know, the the whole human slavery thing is not even that big of a part of this movie anymore, the way it was in the first. Some have made a big deal out of how Neo chooses his own romantic partner over the rest of the world. I agree that the stakes are higher in this case, but that is a Hollywood action movie trope. That's how it always is. The, the hero puts himself and his, you know, the, the people closest to him above everyone else. The, you know, there are, there are varying degrees of this, but that is kind of yeah, that's that's the idea. It's it's this thing of I can focus primarily on my own and still and it'll still be okay. It's it's legitimizing that feeling and it's also just it's easier for the audience to relate to someone saving his own you know, romantic partner over saving like you know, a bunch of just regular people that, you know, he doesn't necessarily have a direct connection to. You know, if I, I agree that if, you know, we're, we're talking, of course, of Neo, the door Neo chooses. I, if, if Neo switched side to, to work with the architect, you know, that would be out of nowhere. That would be, you know, that would be awful. But as it is, he's just, do, you know, if, if anything, it's just following convention. It's it's disappointingly following convention, but it's it's not a, it's not a big deal. It's, it's just, it's, may, maybe it was a movie that made you think more about 
what it would mean or how many it would mean. And again, I the stakes are higher, but it's just taking it to, taking it to its extreme, taking it to its logical conclusion. And part of it is also Neo saying, you're lying to me, you're presenting a false choice. You know, and he's defying a figure of authority. This is what he does every single time that he has a chance to. You know, every every single time. He, you know, now it's with the architect. Before it was with Smith and the other agents. You know, the, yeah, every single time that he has that chance. And it's also, you know, he's, he's saying that he can do it the way he, yeah, he's, he's saying there's a third option. The, you're not telling me everything, and I'm going to, yeah. As, as others have pointed out, narratively, and not, not a lot has happened between the, you know, at, at the end, over the course of the film. At the end of the film, the problems are the same as at the start of the film. You know, the machines are headed for Zion. The, the only thing is that we thought that you know the the we and the characters thought that okay well when they meet the the oracle she will help bring the you know but at the at the start of the film we basically think that you know by the end of the film somehow neo will have prevented the the sentinels from you know heading to zion he he will have stopped them or have sent them, you know, forced them to go back through the, you know, we're, we're told at the start that the, the direction they're going, the, the fact that the machines are digging straight down, that means that they'll avoid the, the, the defense that Zion does have. So we, you know, okay, maybe Neo is going to force them to face that defense, or maybe he's going to move the defense, something, but then no, he, he hasn't actually, nothing has actually changed. We're just, we've been told other things. But, like, hypothetically, the, you know, at the end of the film, we're finally told that the, actually, yeah, the, the Oracle tells us in order to, for, for Neo to, to win, he will have to go to the source. He'll have to go to doesn't she too say machine city I, th I think she does and then so yeah you know you expect okay well that'll be how the movie ends maybe that he'll go there and he does go to the source at the end of the movie but that doesn't actually we're, we're told things but nothing else is actually accomplished by the the scene with the architect the you know, Neo goes in and then he's told that, you know, and it's, it's, and there's a plot twist there. But at the end of that scene, nothing has really changed as far as, you know, I mean, you can, you can choose whether or not you believe what the architect says about his choice of door, you know. Briefly on the EMP plan, I really hate it when people walk away from this movie and or the next one and say, the, the why didn't they plan the EMP thing better? They were still, you know, they, when, when they tried to do it, you know, everybody just died. They were still within range because of sabotage. It wasn't, it wasn't that it was poorly planned. It was that someone triggered their EMP before everyone else was in position, and that destroyed the, you know, that made it, made it really easy for the machines to just, you know. And then, you know, after we're told that, the camera pans and we see Bane there. You know, yeah, the, you know, the guy who's been taken over by Smith. It's, you know, and 
I really disagree with Cinema Snob. Maybe he, maybe that was his experience, Cinema Sins. But when I first watched this movie, I knew exactly who that was, lying, you know, right there near Neo. I knew, you know, yeah, 100% that, that was Bane who had been taken over by Smith. I will go into how the franchise changed our view on the machines in my thoughts video for the third movie, but I don't want to spoil anything. And things happen in the third movie that make, yeah, that, that are quite relevant to the discussion of how it changes our views on the machines. Now, I do like that the architect confirms, or, you know, yeah, the, the, in the first one we're told that originally the Matrix was paradise. And here the architect, you know, reiterates that is how the, yeah. And the, you know, he goes more into that. And the, and then we have this whole idea of their, you know, which originally in the first movie, the idea that Neo was the sixth potential one. You know, Cypher says Morpheus had five before you, who he, he convinced they were the one, he convinced, excuse me, them that they were the one, but then they died fighting agents. You know, and here it's then that they legitimately were the one before Neo, and then, you know, it just, yeah, they just re, rebuilt Zion, and which, you know, it, he doesn't really say, but, you know, Morpheus, yeah, Morpheus must just be the most recent person to have been told that he was going to find, you know, the one that, you know, or, yeah, it's it's possible that in previous iterations, you know, that I, f I forget exactly what he said. Previous emergence of the yeah, previous iterations that there, you know, someone else was told he, they would find the one, and then they found, you know, yeah. And I do think that that's, you know, that is a way to say that what we thought was the case isn't. And the idea that there would be a second, a second layer of control that after, you know, the, the, Even if someone wakes up from the Matrix and, you know, starts building Zion or goes to Zion or something, that, yeah, there's still a... The, the, that the machines don't accept that. Because in the first movie, it seems as though the only thing the machines do about the rebels, about people waking up and such, is that, yeah, when, when they... You know, they send agents after them when, excuse me. Yeah, in the first film, it seems as though all the machines can do to, about the fact that there are rebels and that there is the one and, and all this is to try to prevent the rebels from, you know, the, the, Really, the machines don't even, like, for all that Smith says, I suppose he doesn't really talk about whether the one is, yeah, he doesn't really comment on it. And in in this, the only, you know, the, the agents in this, well, yeah, they, they call him the anomaly. So, 
but but that doesn't mean that he's you know that that he is especially that that he's going to win the war for them it just means you know the agents are clearly not sure that they'll be able to defeat him but yeah when yeah i i do think that it's i wish it wasn't just all dumped like that at the very end of the movie in a very long very talky scene and just spelled out to us like that, but I do think it's a decent idea. Again, it's not what we wanted to hear. We we didn't. Yeah, we we didn't want it to go like this. And you know, the next movie is not necessarily going to help matters much. But yeah, it it was it was not at all what. Yeah, and I do think that it, you know, in in the first movie, the the little hint that you know at the time we have no idea what we're looking at. We just see that Neo is on all these screens, and then in this one we see the screens again, and then it's like, oh, so when we saw that, we were watching one of the architect's screens, and I do think that. You know, they they do at least make it visually interesting as well. The you know the the you know the architect showing him all these like important images and such, and the idea that the different screens are different. You know, each represents a, something that Neo might react with and then occasionally it'll pick one of those screens zoom in and continue from that one so it's not that you know I, I know that I remember some people thought that those were some of the previous five ones but then you know when the when the camera goes into one of the monitors and then we the movie just proceeds as if nothing happened yeah it was it was him choosing one of the one of his responses but the and and it is also you know so so they're at least acknowledging that neo could be saying more because in yeah in those he is much more expressive than that and you know, in in the DVD, he'll he'll like say, you know, see how much happier the actor is, and yeah. In the first one, we don't actually see Morpheus carry a gun, and between this. You know, yeah, between watching the first one and then watching this, I wasn't entirely sure if he carried guns. In my, you know, it, it would make sense for him to, but, you know, maybe there was some... Yeah, may, maybe he just didn't, because we never see him carry one. We, we also don't see Cypher with one, but he's specifically trying not to fight anyone in the one situation where we see that he could, you know, and, yeah everybody else that you know even even tank grabs a gun at at one point you know i do really it's it's he's 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 a real wonder of of just pure ham the the just yeah you know dozer goes out a ham as well, a roasted ham, as it were. Although the, that actor hadn't actually been particularly hammy, but then you know they are brothers, so he must have some ham in him. But yeah, the wow. And I do think that it's it's really good that they actually give him. 
you know, the really most of the time when he uses the gun, it doesn't really do too much. You know, the I should briefly say in the, in the thoughts video for the first one, I go into the you know how Neo actually kills a ton of cops and SWAT, and it's a little uncomfortable. Maybe they realize that they, you know, I don't think that would have been, if, if they had done that a second time, it was bad enough that they did it the first time, but if they had done it a second time, that would really not have been, yeah. So instead, here he's, you know, he's not fighting people, he's fighting exiles and agents, and, you know, the, although, as some have noted, at the very end, when Neo flies away from, you know, he flies so fast that the cars are being carried by. Yeah. The cars were probably... Well, actually, well, yeah, we know it's in the evening, so there's a, there's a chance that the majority of the cars were just parked and empty, but he probably killed at least some people flying if he flies so fast that the cars are dragged behind him and we do see it take a toll on the buildings as well yeah there probably some people died there which yeah the the you know going back to what i said about neo caring more about trinity than other yeah but you know the morpheus the the gun is why you know he gets he gets trinity away from one of the twins by firing at the twins head and you know it slows down agent johnson when johnson is on top of their car but really if he didn't blow up the twins car nothing he did with the gun would actually matter you know he even he drags it out he he pulls it on Johnson on top of the, the car and that doesn't exactly go well either and then you know he pulls it on on one of the Smiths at the very end and then we get that the good thing about being me is there's so many me's and yeah if I had been a script doctor on this, I think I would have basically written as a rule, don't make Smith say me, because it it doesn't really go well at, at any point. It's it's always like it's not it's not specifically him talking about there being a lot of him when he gets knocked away during the burly brawl, and then he says more. That works, you know. If he had said more me's wouldn't have worked but the yeah the, the one time Morpheus uses the gun and it matters is blowing up the twins car that you know that's the only time that it actually stops genuinely stops the enemy that he was trying to to stop but when this came out I remember some saying that the twins weren't dead because they did they they morphed as they you know during the explosion and yeah I kinda thought like I guess the explosion is just so big or they can't morph through fire I, I don't know it if they can't morph through fire how can they morph through like well I, I guess because the fireball is all encompassing them and they can't I don't know I don't think they should have morphed during that because it just confuses people I think I mean I guess it would be very brutal if they weren't morphing and we just saw them like that with with the fire but I don't know maybe maybe if the, there was the explosion and we don't see them and Morpheus stand there waiting for a second and then we see like one of their arms like slide out from you know the you know the the way the movie language for that person is dead i've never understood why trinity intentionally jumps out the window like that i get she's 
she wants to get away from the agent, which at that point, it's, it's not Johnson at all in that. I think it starts out as Jackson, and then it becomes the, the last, which I forget his name, but, you know, then there's two of them for, for that. But it just, there's no way that she's going to, it, she knew that as she was doing that, Neo was inside the room. She knew the rules. She knew she had no reason to expect him to be able to get back in time. And I'm not, you know, it makes perfect sense that she does go and, you know, do the, the hack and everything. But, yeah, it's just, I, if they wanted her flying backwards out of the, which, they wanted her flying backwards out of the window, firing mini Uzis, micro Uzis, as, you know, an agent was, you know, flying after shooting at her. But the for one thing, one option is that he picked her up and threw her with her back first out the window. That it, you know, then she didn't make the the choice there. Or if you want her to be making the choice Maybe there was a building really close. Maybe there was a, a vehicle that she expected to be able to get to, but then the, you know, they destroyed the vehicle. You know, similar to how in the first one you have the the helicopter rescue. You know, Morpheus jumping through the air because there's a helicopter there. I guess it would have been disappointing if the if there was a vehicle and then it just blew up without any other people being involved there but yeah it's just the way it is in the movie it just looks like she's essentially committing suicide and just figuring at least I'll you know I'll be able to shoot him too or something and it just yeah I I don't know I I really wish they had done that in a different way because she has no reason I don't even think that she knows the details of his dream she doesn't know that he like if she had if he had told her I see you falling backwards and then like you know and and ending up dying like that then she might like say well what if what if you could fly in and help me in, in time or something? But she doesn't even know that, like, she doesn't know that she's doing what he dreamt she'd do. So, you know, what, what, so I guess it really isn't, she's not saying maybe, maybe I'll actually live even though I do this. So she's doing something suicidal without knowing that there's a chance that that was, yeah. Now, the way I see it, I, I don't think this is rationalizing. I feel like the movie is basically saying, you know, Neo could destroy Smith in one, but then they upgraded the agent. You know, he, he could blow up an agent from inside in one because those weren't upgraded agents. But now, you know, I mean, he says upgrades. I, I don't know what else it would refer to. He's even, when you look at his moves, he... He specifically reaches out the way that he did in the first one, and then, you know, he, and and then it, it becomes, clear. oh, wait, I can't do it again. And then he says, upgrades. And then he's, you know, he was fighting with one hand the way he did with Smith and one. So he, yeah, he was just waiting, you know, he was like, okay, a few seconds of this, and then I'll destroy him from within. But then he's, you know, then it becomes clear that that's not going to work. And so he starts fighting with, you know, more force and then still easily defeats them. And he can't do that with any pro, with any, only, only agents from the previous, you know, before the upgrade. He can't do that with the exiles that he fights in the Chateau. Again, as far as I understand, it's, yeah. And, and, you know, it makes sense that the, the machines would go and say, well, you know, 
will have to upgrade the we're, we're, it's it's a bug fix it's computer logic and you know some say why didn't smith infect neo or morpheus in both cases he tried but was stopped and it would appear that morpheus could not have resisted it the way neo did but neo is you know there's there's a connection neo is the one yeah and with neo there's all, also only one of them going into him but excuse me but but yeah it's it, you know we see in the you know it's not a clone it's it's a process it's not a clone until the process has completed and you know the the and and as for bane you know why is smith you know for those not sure basically smith takes over bane's avatar he takes over his idea of what he you know yeah it's not you know it's not literally as though he were like yeah it's it's bane's mind that's hooked into the computer and that mind becomes like smith's because of the infection so smith you know is now has yeah has at that point taken over bane as he exists within the matrix and then when he goes back into bane's actual physical brain you know the mind makes it real his mind is now overwritten by smith's code and during the captain's meeting the the guy who kind of looks like mouse i i forget someone i think back when when the movie was new someone said it, he must be mouse's brother rat i i like that rat why does he just accept the the thing he he doesn't trust the guy on the other side of the door why does he accept it that could be a bomb you know and before you say oh but it's so small it's about the size of the bug in one what if they have bugs that blow up you know and he and he clearly doesn't and then he like provokes him he doesn't he doesn't know it's smith but wouldn't he figure that maybe it's an agent why, why would he like I, th I think it's it's that there's some kind of immature part of the Wachowskis that say, "Yeah, screw you, authority figure," and just every time there's an authority figure in the Matrix trilogy, you know, the, a character like defies that authority, and yeah, you know, and here it just makes no sense. Rat would not want attention drawn to this, you know, he would. Yeah, like, let's say it wasn't Smith and it wasn't an agent. What if it was just someone, just a completely regular person? And, like, you know, I mean, he's at, he's behaving like a criminal, basically. That's, if, if someone knocks on your door and, like, you know, says, hey, is, is this, you know, if, if you, like, Okay, not not only criminals would do that, but he's not he's not being conspicuous is what I'm getting at. I'm not I'm not saying obviously you you have the right to say whatever you want to you know he, if it's your property then the other person is trespassing, but wouldn't you just act as though like I'm I'm looking for Neo. I'm sorry, there's no Neo here. You must have the wrong address. Good luck. You know. That's not gonna, but but no. As if if it was a completely regular person, even that he, I'm looking for Neo. Okay, this guy's an agent, a cop, something. Don't provoke him. May, you know, instead, actually try to maybe get like. Actually, here's the thought. How about respond with, I'll go get him. Because if it is if it is someone that Neo needs to take care of, then you then you've gotten Neo there. But provoking a stranger who might be, let's say that it was a completely like 
it wasn't a cop, it wasn't an agent, it wasn't Smith, it was just a regular person, and he's just, oh, hey, what's going on here? N nothing? Go away, go away. You know, then that guy might call the cops, that call might be intercepted by agents, and there you go. And I love how the, the you know, the, the other guy is like, how could you tell there was someone there? Dude, you're in a movie. Everybody can hear. And like Morpheus, when Morpheus walked in, he also magically heard something someone was, you know, talking about from way inside the room that there's no way he heard, you know. Yeah, I probably didn't notice this much before I watched any CinemaSins, but yeah. It doesn't bother me. It's just that's, that's, you know, I'm just surprised that a character in this is surprised that that's the, the reality. The way I see it, you know, it's it's fiction. You make, you know, there there are things that are completely unlike the real world. And I do appreciate that Smith being like a virus in this is, you know, he told Morpheus in one that humanity was a virus. So, yeah. I really like the Keymaker. He has genuine, like, he's, they're, they're, like, you, you take it seriously when you're supposed to, but then he also has these really funny moments that when, like, when Trinity is about to, you know, Yeah, she, she's like, okay, I need to know how to hotwire a, a motorcycle. And, you know, those motorcycles, the, the red ones and that shit, yeah, that's Akira. That's definitely an Akira reference, you know. But, you know, there, there are tons of different appearances for motorcycles, but they, they chose to have several red ones with that. I mean, yeah, they don't look exactly like the Akira ones because that wouldn't fit in the Matrix, but... They look enough like it. It's definitely, and it's the same shade of red, more or less. Anyway, yeah, the, the, you know, you, you, she's like, you know, okay, need to, and, and then he grabs the key and just hands it to, and, and just the look on his face. And then she's like, you are handy. And again, just, you know, it's, it's, it's not a big moment. It's, it's very underplayed and it's, it's quite funny. I appreciate that in this, people, you know, like, moving out of the way of bullets, that's only something that, like, you know, the, the, the twins can do it, and agents can do it, and that's it, because in Enter the Matrix, everyone can do it. it the first time I played Enter the Matrix, I was like, oh no, they died, and then later on in the game, you see, no, they're still alive. So when they like when when they were shot at and they fell over, they were pretend they were they were they were dodging agent style the way Trinity specifically said in the first one. She's never seen anyone move that fast. Did he go around and teach everyone? Yeah. Neo bringing Trinity back to life. First, you know, removing the bullet and then restarting her heart is absolutely ridiculous. I, I don't care how... Yeah, it's just, it's... Again, like, you can... There are things you can, you can make me believe. There are things in the Matrix that can happen. But that's just, that's going too far. You know, he, we literally see him reach inside and take the bullet. And he's not like just sticking a few fingers, he shoves his entire hand in there and then like phases his hand out of her like a, you know like a ghost kind of thing with, and then the bullet and then again and then her heart stops they didn't have to have her heart stop why, why not just he gets the bullet and then or yeah and just not let her heart stop just like get I don't know I just it, it's it's ridiculous of a scene and really goes too far of what we can believe. A lot of the action here is trying to do 
what the first one did, but bigger, and it gets excessive, you know, it goes on for too long, there's too much of it, you know, there, there's, there's no doubt that there's too much slow-mo of martial arts action and such. And, you know, they even have to write Neo out of action scenes because he's a walking deus ex machina. During the freeway, he's flying. It, it, you know, I'll grant that Niobe is in part a deus ex during the freeway scene, but, you know, we did see her on her way. And it is one of those action scenes that were cut out of the movie so that it could be in the you know, It was always written to be in the Matrix, I know, but it feels like it's missing in the movie. But, you know, the, yeah, you know, during the power plant, oh, he can't, you know, he can't be doing the power plant thing because of the time thing. And it's just, it's so contrived. The, I, I appreciate the reference to the, you know, if you don't know, I believe, I want to say it's on the IMDb trivia page. You know, why exactly those, why 27 blocks, why 314 seconds, you know, yeah. I appreciate that, but it's such, there's such arbitrary rules just to make sure that, you know, that the movie goes the way it goes. Because, yeah, like, I believe the name is Soren, and I probably wouldn't know that if I hadn't played the game so many times. But the captain, you know, he even says, Neo could do it faster than we could. You know, oh, but he has to, yeah. And the, you know, and given that the, the power plant, the, that entire bit, that's also, that's in the game. You know, that's why the movie basically lacks an action climax. Because we just see the, the plan intercut with them doing it. But, yeah, also, like, we, we know that Neo is supposed to go to the source like the it was part of the architect's plan he's not like crap you're here well now I have no he's like okay now that you're here you got some questions once we've gotten that out of the way go through the door you know he's he's waiting for Neo to get there so he can tell him to go through the right door so that so why make it so intricately like it yeah it, it really feels like they're just writing around okay well let's see Neo needs to not be able to do it we need an action scene for the climax and then for Neo to be separated from the rest of the the group for for that portion and we need to have Trinity nearly die there so it's it's just why not just make it difficult for Neo to do, but make it something that only he could do, instead of making it this ridiculous, like, yeah, just, I, how is Smith supposed to be in the hallway of doors, the, you know, and from a lot of different doors, too, you know, the, you need a special key to even get into the hallway, we know Seraph has some, the Keymaker makes them, Merovingian has some. I mean, are we supposed to believe that he took it from one of them? I mean, without spoiling anything, Seraph is in the third movie, and he doesn't look like Smith took a key from him. You know, the, the Merovingian, as well, in the third movie, doesn't look like Smith yeah, so, so, and we know it's not, it, it can't have been from the Keymaker, because the Keymaker was with the Merovingian, so, yeah, it's just, I, I really feel like that, at the very least, maybe needed some explaining or something. I, I, I don't mind the fact that there are a lot of Smiths, and they're in different locations, but they, all of the ones who enter the hallway, every time a door opens into the hallway and a smith comes through, that means that that smith had a key. You're not, I mean, yeah, because the, 
or does it mean that the room that they were in well even if Smith got to that room either he had a key or he knew exactly where to go to like has he just been going around opening doors everywhere and I believe it's called the mega city just hoping just waiting to find doors leading into the hallways yeah I, I don't mind the fact that he can find Neo, which we see, you know, he finds him at the very start, he finds him for the, the burly brawl, and then he finds him there at the end. He says they're connected. Now, the, the freeway chase combines a lot of different kinds, you know, combines and contains a lot of different kinds of action. We've got shooting from a car, from a car that's driving, into a car that's driving. We've got melee inside of a car that's driving, on top of a truck that's driving with a katana. We've got shooting the, the gas tank of a car until it blows up with people inside. the, you know, driving a motorcycle, slaloming, you know, in and out of traffic, you know, going against the traffic. You've got, you know, and on a freeway, you've got cars flipping over, you've got someone frog doing a frog leap from one car to another, you know, you've got people moving between cars, you know, the, the twin, you've got, you know, rev you've got several different sides, you've got rebels, the twins working for the Merovingian, you've got cops thinking they're just, you know, they're chasing Morpheus, uh, you know, he's, he's a fugitive, he's a terrorist. I, I forget, I guess they don't even, they don't actually use the term terrorist in the movies, do they? But you know, he, yeah, he's he's called one of the most dangerous men alive in the first movie. So, yeah, you've got agents. And the, you know, and, and the way I see it, the, the, the reason that the leapfrog, you know, the reason that it crushed the, the car that it jumped to and then from to get to the, you know, yeah, to, to get to the, the car with the, the rebels, the Exxon, the twin, which sounds like the start of a joke. A car drives on the freeway, two rebels, an exile, and a twin. You know, the, the reason that it crushes the car is not from him landing on it, but from him using it to, you know, he's putting all that pressure under his feet to, to leap from it onwards where he just he just jumps regularly from his you know from his own car from the first car now in the first one some of the action is just what they could afford what they felt they could get away with you know knowing that you know if they pushed it too far you know Warner Brothers were not going to just, they, they would say, look, we, we need to make money on this thing, you know, so, yeah. And, you know, the, the effects that they could do at the time and what they had time for in the schedule. And I do think some of the, you know, some of what's in this that kind of tops you know, a, a lot of what's the action in this tries to top what's in the first one and does really work. You know, in the first one you have a, you know, the, the opening with this, you know, wh where we don't have any context for what's going on. Trinity beats up just, you know, a few cops, so he or she beats up about half a dozen or something. 
and you know in the first one you have you know her jumping from a helicopter you know right before it crashes and blows up and here it's the motorcycle that crashes and blows up in the first you've got the the glass rippling from the building you know the skyscraper that the helicopter crashed into here the the crash is of the two trucks and you know you've got like screws flying off and you know it's it's not glass it's the the steel that's yeah that's rippling and we you know we we mostly see one of the sides of it but you know overall we do see almost some both sides you know it, it's does it qualify i guess it qualifies as a a bullet time sequence because it does go more or less 360 degrees and you know we're in the first one we have a truck making a really sudden swift turn and then ram you know in, in the first one it's ramming into this you know phone booth and then here it crashes into another truck which is also driving fast in the first one Neo flies for a few seconds so here he flies for minutes on end you know we don't even see all of the the times that he flies and he flies isn't it at least three times to to save others and or himself he flies to the freeway he flies away from the burly brawl and he flies to save trinity and that's also him flying away from a building that's blowing up it's as soon as he opens the door so yeah and where in the first movie neo easily beats one agent here he easily beats three agents and you know it fittingly in the first movie it's the last time he faces any agents in this it's the first time he faces any agents and really it's also the only time that he faces agents the the other times it's morpheus and trinity facing agents And in the first one, Morpheus fights one agent without shades, without his jacket on. I believe, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was without his coat on in the first one as well. And so here, you know, he does so atop a moving truck. And where in the first one we have a few chases on foot, this one, you know, big car chases instead. In the first one, Neo stops just a few bullets with his hands, and this one, it, yeah, it must be hundreds. I, I really wish that they had made them look different, because they're clearly not all the same caliber. You know, look at all the different guns that they're using. But I do really like, we really see Merovingian is, a, you know, he's a, a mafia leader. You know, that's that's how you react as a mafia leader when another you know, when when someone else tries to take something of yours or something. It's it's a gangland execution. You know, they're lined up, all firing uh, you know, automatic weapons in a line you know, I mean if he Yeah, I think I've said what I wanted to say about that. And where you know, in the first one, Neo fights Smith for several minutes. Here, there are a lot of Smiths, and yeah, you know, certainly dozens. Some have said it's a total of 87. Some have said it's over 100. And where in the first one, there's just a few bullet time sequences and you know, slow mo bits. This has tons. And the first one, you know, Morpheus speaks from this, you know, the the old chair, and then here again, and it's it's again, it's the the first time he has a really big long speech in the first movie, and here it's the last time he has a big long speech. And in the first one, we have a very short rave, and in this one, it goes on for minutes and. The, the critics point out it's, it has the, the feeling of like a, a beer commercial. And the, the people look 
as ecstatic as like people who are in the matrix and don't know it and you know Morpheus's speech is truly terrible and there's this really uncomfortable cult feeling to it and it's I mean Morpheus is an intense character in the first movie but when when it's just one person talking this I mean he's it's just those ten people at the end of the day you know and and even among those ten people Cypher clearly doesn't you know in the, in the first one it also almost sounds like Cypher didn't really have a choice between like he you know Morpheus freed him so he has to work for Morpheus in in this movie I almost feel like I mean if you don't want to work can't you just if, if you don't want to risk your life as one of the rebels can't you work in Zion as like because he specifically you know I only do what he you know Morpheus tells me to do and yeah I don't know I suppose it's possible that Cypher considers staying in Zion but would rather sell out the entire ship that's that's possible but yeah you know the it's 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 one thing when Morpheus is talking you know nine people into doing things but when he's talking to thousands and they're like cheering and I mean he he genuinely tells them that you know even though there is an army coming to destroy us we shouldn't worry at all like that's that's a little bit scary it's a little bit like drink the kool-aid kind of yeah I do respect that the the rave has a lot of different ethnicities and they're not only shown but they're celebrated their bodies are celebrated when this is you know so many movies are terrified to even admit that people who aren't white exist much less that they should be treated with respect much less that they are natural and beautiful and the, that the movie does that I yeah I, I tip my hat to that it's still an uncomfortable scene and an awkward one and some people say ah who would dance if they might die soon different people deal with crises in different ways and it is a way to deal with stress and it's a if you know it's a or the terrorists will win kind of thing you know they won't take our joy and they do believe that Neo will solve it they're not all going to be making shells now I don't mean to be a buzzkill but I really hope that somebody's watching the children while all these people dance. I, well, I guess, I mean, I suppose the some of the older, the, the people we see during the rave seem to all be younger. I suppose it's possible that the, the older and the underage in Zion are, you know, together during that because you know again I don't it's not the 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 fact that it's so sexually charged all this dancing and that you know there's some some say it's it's an orgy scene and I mean it's it's clearly very sexually charged of a scene and there's and I'm pretty sure I saw at least one same-sex couple they were both women you can calm down I don't know why people are so bothered but anyway yeah the the but but it's the the yeah you know I I don't you know what people choose to do sexually is not you know but yeah it's just an awkward scene and I mean I guess if
I'm not saying that they would at all have an option to use protection if you know that you know there, there's only so much that they can allocate resources for and realistically create something that works and maybe they don't mind you know having children but and and you know it's entirely possible that they in spite of well yeah I'm sorry at, the, at that point then well if you're having sex surrounded by other people like that are we really supposed to believe that nobody absolutely nobody has like some kind of like has has some kind of VD or anything and that they might you know yeah given that they're all so close to each other that you know that is how this kind of thing happens that yeah I don't know maybe I'm overanalyzing during the burly brawl one of these smiths fall off you know in up up against one of the buildings and I don't even think he hits it but he falls apart when yeah it's it's not focused on it's in the background but it's it's kind of funny and once you've seen it one time you can't unsee it and some of no there, there's supposed to be this hurricane feeling to the burly brawl and I can kind of Excuse me. I can kind of see that, especially in, in some of the aerial shots. And the critics point out, why don't, why doesn't Neo just fly away as they walk up? I mean, it does it does does he not think at all that it might be a problem that there are, you know? I mean, once he's seen that there are several of them, why isn't it? Isn't it logical to think, well, if there are five of him now, there might be dozens of him. You know, why would he be able to stop at five? Is this is this one one of those microevolution to macroevolution things? Is is that where we are? And I mean, they could easily have done it. They could have just had him start to fly up, and then some of them like jump in to grab a hold of him and drag him back down. Maybe he flies up some and then one of them launches themselves out of a window, grabs him and, you know, pulls him down with him. And that surprises Neo so much that he doesn't have to, you know, something. And the critics also pointed out, in the first one, when Neo gets a new skill, it's because he's learned something and that's not the case here. Everything Smith says about purpose is true, but it's not a villain speech. It's not building the way they maybe think that the which I just maybe think it it is. We're just, you know, and it it should be because this is the time we see that there's more than two Smiths. You know, at at first we don't know that there's, or wait, I suppose actually by then we've already seen Smith. You know, in with with Bane. So yeah, so so we know that. There are two Smiths normally, and we know that he's inside Bane. We don't know that there are dozens by then, you know. And it's it's certainly the first visual reveal. It's the first time we see, you know, except for those of us who watch the trailer, of course. And I, I appreciate that the inevitable line still means the same thing. You know, he's seeing he's saying, it is inevitable. I will win, you will lose. I am a machine, I am smarter than you, I am perfect. You are a human, you will, you know, even if I'm not the one to defeat you, you will die sooner or later. Although I don't think Smith thinks that he won't be the one to defeat him. And unlike the first movie here, the action doesn't always stop it doesn't always end, it kind of just stops, and certainly no one wins. This is very much the case in, during the Burly Brawl, in the hallway. You know, it's it's just, yeah, why... I, I feel like they could have just had some kind of... Maybe there's... Maybe Smith could only take over, let's say, 20 
people at once. And so, you know, ultimately all he you know, he brings twenty against Neo, and Neo just barely defeats them, and then he flies off. And then Smith, you know, and and then I don't know, some maybe something about like once he's you know, yeah, if he took over this other character, then he would be able to keep... Or, or maybe it's a concentration thing, maybe it's something that he builds to, that, you know, okay, he could only take over 20 there, but then, you know, he... Yeah, yeah, at, at the end of that, maybe he says, back, you know, back to training, so something like he's, he He indicates that he's going to practice making more, or something. When Trinity fights the, you know, they're, they're at the very start, all these, you know, guards, I love the bit where she, you know, leaps in the air and it's in slow motion and she s kind of spins, but I really hate that they do an insert shot in real time of her hitting the one guy and then back to the you know with with Neo during the I think Chateau fight there's something slightly similar but they they handle it much better and it's I don't I don't think it's an insert shot at all and just yeah I really wish I don't think we needed an, an insert shot Personally, I think that if you just went in and you cut that part out so that it just, so she just leaps and then she spins and then you see the guy, fine, because we can, we can tell that she just hit him. It actually, it almost feels like it was something that they put in at an early point because there, there are tons of later fight moves where we're not, you know, we can just, we can tell that he must have hit that character or you know we didn't completely see it but that you know something I've read other parts of this franchise the links are in the description box